As the defenders of Planet Vigilus desperately battle an Orc Wog, a huge gene stealer cultist insurrection, instigated by the claw of the thirsting worm, assails them from below. Can the arrival of a strike force of space wolves turn the tide against this grave threat? Warhammer 40,000 Tooth and Claw is a 2018 battle box that escalates the fighting on Vigilus, setting the Space Wolves against the Gene Stealer cult. Inspired by this, we sought to replicate this battle in the Warhammer 40,000 Conquest card game, now deceased. All the way in the Traxxas Sector, in some other universe, Subject Omega faces Ragnar Blackman. Hello and welcome to another episode of Conquestador. My name is Tristan. And my name is Warren. Today I'm playing the Tyranid faction. And I'm playing Space Wolves. Welcome to the first episode in our narrative play season or arc where we are getting inspiration from some of Games Workshop's uh, box sets and some of Black Library's novels and we're very excited to be inspired by this sort of thing. So the Tyranid Warlord I'm playing today is a gene stealer, subject Omega XX2113 with the, what is it called again? Synapse unit. Ah, yes. Stalking Victor. And his ability is? Each gene stealer card in your hand may be deployed to infested planets as if it had ambush. Oh, nice. Narratively sound. And I am playing Ragnar Blackmane, um, which essentially is a warlord hunter. So his reaction is after a warlord commits to a planet with an enemy warlord, you deal two damage to that enemy unit. So he's hunting and causing damage. Already the game has begun, so we're slightly behind. You've got to support right down quick oh, yes. on turn yeah. one. That was quite nice, actually. The, that's the Fortress Monastery. So essentially all Space Marine units um, cost one less if I exhaust this. Oh, it's the standard yes, card it, in all exactly. factions. But it's, 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 it's nice to get as, a, in, as your initial card um, hand. Yeah, first thing out on the, on the board. And then uh, from the Tyranids, we played a regular invasive gene stealer. This is the Signature Squad 4 Subject Omega. And this card is really great if you deploy it when it has ambush because it has this ability that says uh, once you do that you can target an enemy army unit at the planet until the end of the phase the targeted unit gets minus one hp and this unit this gene stealer gets plus one hp but alas yeah and then i went ahead and played a void pirate i was just trying to get some resources and cards but then you countered it with another invasive gene stealer again not having ambush but that means you got minus one hp yeah and he only has one health so he died <laughs> I think we were discussing it uh, over here, or maybe I was explaining. Yeah. <laughs> that is how this is going down. But I yeah. suppose that's the crux of your um, your, your warlord is is the sneak attack, <clears throat> trying to ambush people and just gene stealers for days. I like the the gene stealer warlord. Very nice, sort of not story, but I, I like the feel of it. That that ambushy sneakiness. It mm. feels like gene stealers. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's one thing they've done very well in making this game is the it's very narrative. Mm. They try to keep it applicable. And hopefully now with uh, all of the episodes of Conquestador coming up, you'll see we, we have lots of narrative inspiration. Indeed. So now, now we're thinking. Yeah. For the most part, you will see cuts where I cut out the think tank moments, but this one was a bit longer. What do you got there? Um, those are some Blood Angel veterans. Um, so they're an interesting ability where while they're readied, then they gain, they gain a special ability called reaction. So after this unit is assigned damage, you get to prevent one of that damage. Tough as nails. So it, it's one thing I think I want to comment on now is that this army unit was following my wall a lot of the time, so he was not readied most of the time, and you didn't uh, attack it, mm. which maybe was a um, poor planning. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm always misreading it, yeah, because I just assume he's always, always going to block a damage. <laughs> yeah. And then I played a, an honored librarian, um, which works very well in conjunction with this Blood Angel Veterans because you cannot attack the honored librarian unless he's the only um, unit on their planet, or space marine unit, rather. Um, so it's nice. I mean, you have to attack the Blood Angel Veterans and they'll take one less damage, and it, yeah, it works very nicely. That is what it's about, the combos. Mm. So if you're uh, watching Conquistador prior to this episode, uh, you will note we've played with the Tyranids once before. I think I played a Swarm Lord and I introduced the, the different command dial if you are new to Warhammer 40k Conquest, uh, their living card game. So I'm yeah. committing both my Synapse unit and my Warlord, whereas Ragnar just commits his Warlord. Yeah, just to one himself. planet. But it is nice for you because obviously I'm a, well, my character's special ability is to try hunt the wall, enemy warlord, and you just kept playing him. Mm. 
And I think we discussed this in this game is, is I felt like I was running away trying to dodge, being sneaky and stuff. But also that's a problem if you're trying to win planets, Mm. which we'll see in this game a bit. All right, so um, we just had our command phase there and got things. I think you won planet one. I got some from planet two. You Mm -hmm. definitely got planet three and I got the the last planet, planet five. Two cards there. Yeah, it's it's a it's a tricky thing to balance the resources versus cards because if you have all the resources in the world and you don't have cards to play, then it's just as bad as having all the cards and no resources. Exactly. So the, the balance is good. Mm. All right. So I think we're starting or commencing battle. I have initiative on Osis Four. Mm. What What's am th- I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I ask myself every time we play this game. <laughs> And there's the, I don't know if anyone else has seen this, but um, Warren has a, a leg twitch when he's thinking a lot. <laughs> and it just bounces, 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 bounces. So he's clearly deep in thought. Which yeah. I will take as a, as a compliment to my gameplay that I can make him think just a little bit. Oh, definitely. Um, I'm always just trying to outthink you or outsmart mm. you. That's it. That's um, what the game is about, really. Mm. And if you've, again, been following the series, he has done that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Very good games, though. They're close, I think, some of them. This one, we'll see how long this one goes. Um, all right, but we use a biomass shield. sacrifice as a shield, which I was desperate to use in game because mm. I just like the idea of like um, sacrifice biomass. Well, at least you started including shields in your, your decks because we discussed this from the previous games yeah. is that I hadn't put many in exactly. Mm. That's true. Um, so you swung for two uh, to the stalking Lictor, yeah, and then it fights back for one, yeah. Which you take to the face. <laughs> well, I didn't. I don't think I had any shields. I wasn't willing to waste those cards for one damage. Um, I suppose uh, you, what you're thinking here is you don't want to lose or synapse the creature because mm. it, it's actually quite, um, I guess, maneuverable because you get to commit to two different plans yeah, along very with your versatile unit. That's, that's the word, versatile. And this is something I worry that I may be doing too much in our games. Is um, retreating units mm. kind of putting them out to win command or at least challenge command and then they they flee so they never actually fight to the end exactly hmm. so i've just played a drop pod assault um so what it does is it allows me to search the top six decks sorry so top six cards on my deck <laughs> it's only one deck right? <laughs> um and then i get to pick a, a army unit that's got a printed cost of three or lower um to then um play on that on a, a target planet Mm. And it was quite nice because the actual drop pod assault itself is only cost two, and then mm. you could potential to playing a unit that's got a printed cost of three. And I believe what has just happened is we went, oh, by the way, we forgot whether anyone chooses to retreat. Um, and you were like, well, then in that case, I wouldn't use a drop pod. Yes. So we went back. But the drop pod is an amazing card. Yeah. Agreed. And I think I just ended up putting up all six cards at the bottom of the deck. Did you really? Mm. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I think you just put them back. Yeah, back on top. Eh. So I knew what I was coming, which but is all right. you also then knew what I had in my hand. More or less. Um, then, so you won Osis 4, you took a resource, I won Planet Planet 5, which I forget the name of, <laughs> and then I got to discard a card. Yeah, you discarded Iron Halo, which is you know one of the signature weapons, it's a relic, and it, 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 as a reaction you get to negate all damage um, by exhausting this attachment, but mm. yeah, you you obviously discarded it. If it hasn't become clear to anyone watching at this point and the differing sort of color or lighting, should I rather say, it's because this is the first game we've played at night mm. and we recorded at night. So we, we put up a little lamp uh, just to get some extra light so you can see what's going on. Create some ambiance. Yes, and it was very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you already piling up them resources. I know. And this is the thing, when we first started playing, you played Kato a lot, mm. Captain Kato Sicarius, mm-hmm. and... The fact that you got resources whenever you kill the unit was yes. t- terrifying to me because you just constantly get more and more resources. Yeah, that in, then in addition to winning the command struggles and yeah, economic stronghold. Mm-hmm. Um, so Prometheum mine to counter that a little. Uh, it's always a good, a solid card to play. I mean, it's one extra resource every turn. Mm. I've started putting in all neutrals not doubles I think you put in like doubles of everything alright what you got out there um, it was a rune priest so this is a space wolf unit um, it's got a force interruptibility which means or oh, essentially when a non-space rune unit leaves or retreats from a planet that he's on you deal one damage to that unit mm. you went and promoted someone <laughs> yeah stalking lictor just needed to be promoted at this point 
That's your synapse creature. Yeah, she's yeah. been doing well. She's going planet one, having a little bit of a tussle, then leaving. What, what, what's, what's the base command icons on that unit? It's two. The stalking victor. Yeah. I believe it is two. So unlike the other synapse units, it's one of the rare few, I think the only one actually, I stand corrected, that doesn't have an ability, that doesn't mm. have some sort of effect. Um, so it has four health, but only one attack. And I think the payoff is that it has two command icons. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. I deep struck a thing. We must have missed that um, in the cut there. But yes, I, I deep struck and thus um, have released the slavering Morlock, which is fantastic because its reaction is that it gains armor bane until the end of the phase. Yeah. So to those of you that don't know what armor bane means, it means I cannot shield against his attack. And so normally if, so, if an enemy unit attacks a defender, you can shield for any number of uh, damage. Mm-hmm. Um, represented on that, that shield card. But armor bands means it just goes right through the shield. And now comes the drop pod yep. um, in earnest, in reality, and you take the six cards and you choose what you want to ambush down. Mm. Ambush, again, being the mechanic of the game, not so much anything else. There we go. This card is hectic. So this is veteran brother Maxos. Um, so it costs three, it's got two damage, three HP, but has a combat action ability which allows you to pay the printed cost for a space marine unit in your hand and play it to a planet. Now, this is already after your deployment phase. Um, so this is actually quite quite useful. And so nice that it, it counters the gene stealer mechanic of ambush as well. Mm. I think it's such a nice space marine answer. And you have more answers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I was trying to react to the sneakiness of the gene stealers mm. in, the, in the sense that I also had ambush cards. So I played an eager recruit uh, who has... An ambush ability, so two damage, uh, one health. Uh, you now go ahead and kill something. <laughs> My initiative swinging for three that can't be uh, protected. And I think you thought it was on your rune priest, but yes. I was like, no, we are killing that guy. Yeah, he's not going to stay around. So I realized if I use his, com- his combat ability, combat action, mm-hmm. I could have brought another unit on, onto their planet. Aha! Uh-huh. And did you have another one in your hand? Can you remember? I, I don't know. <laughs> mm. That's something you're very good at as mm. well, is really flooding a planet with, with units. But you yeah. do it in a way that I think um, any person with lesser experience would, would just always put it to planet one so that when they come back, they're exhausted. But you manage to balance out that flooding um, well enough. Yeah. So I attacked there with my Rune Priest, and I was trying to... You shielded, but I was trying to use a No Mercy neutral card to, uh, um, to negate that. But it didn't work because of you have to exhaust... A unique, unique unit, which I didn't have on that planet. So you shielded it. He only took one damage. Alas. Yeah, so you shielded for two there. Must have been a good, good card. Yeah, I can't see what that card is. It looks like one shield. Oh, yeah, just one. And now we're thinking. <laughs> I always think I cut out too much of the thinking, and now I'm not sure. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should kind of take more out but this gives you a real sense of the game i think because there are moments when we'll sit and you'll just be like hmm if this happens then that happens and we sit there for a bit yeah yeah no, absolutely i mean you have to i guess you can't contemplate every single potential um option but yeah we try to as, <laughs> as much as we can mm-hmm. uh, and maybe that's something in different videos like i am a, a fan and follower of the hive tyrant so i'll put a link in the description box below um to his channel but the hive tyrant comments on or commentates on uh, games as well and for some reason those games don't look edited and they're super fast oh yeah uh, they must be very experienced players because they just they go through the motions there's very little getting caught in the think tank sure sure but yeah it comes with practice mm-hmm. So I'm just having a look here. You committed your synapse creature to the third planet. Is that purely for resources? I think so. Okay. I was seeing you get so many. Yeah. So there we go. You you exhausted your gene sealer to attack my eager recruit. He did no damage. And you were thinking of shielding and, and back and forth and yeah. designing. Okay. So that was the cause for delay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So your gene sealer does have two damage on him. Because mm. okay. I shielded for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that's... Murloc, is it? Or the Morlock. Morlock. Murloc. <laughs> World of Warcraft, Murloc. Infiltrate. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a moment to uh, decide, does anyone want to retreat yes. at the end of that battle round? So I didn't want to retreat uh, because if you had retreated, then you would have taken one damage mm. because uh, anyone who's not a Space Marine or Space Wolf unit takes one damage if they retreat. But obviously you're in a stronger position there with your, your Morlock. It was really nice to have a strong unit. Uh, Warren and I off 
camera or off mic uh, just now we're, we're talking about how very seldom I have really strong units to counter the space marine yeah. threat. Yeah. Um, so I was really chuffed that the Morlock came out that I managed to draw him in time to really provide some sort of challenge. Hmm. Yeah, especially the space marines have a number of cards that have AOE effects. So it just does one damage or two damage to everyone mm. or any every opponent on that, uh, that planet. And it kills a lot of the smaller, weaker enemy units. Gene Sealers and there's also So the, the staple, I feel, is the tactical squad, Cardenas. But then yes. there's also your darling assault squad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and by darling, we mean daring. Daring, yes. So every time I read it, I think it's darling. <laughs> but yeah, they have AOE too. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we're still debating retreating or not. And I think I decided not to. And thus we're in combat action phase. It's my initiative. Are there any actions in this action window that I would like to use or activate? And then once I've decided, then you can also choose. Mm. Nope. Oh, I do. Okay, so, so I retreat. After all of that, in mm. fact, it went away. <laughs> Which means I win that planet. And what's the planet's ability? I do not recall. <laughs> There's a lot of pointing going on here. Yeah, I think we're debating what happens with the planet's ability. This often happens. I know the last planet is Planum, which lets you move um, a target unit, army unit. I think I chose not to trigger that because nothing's happening. We haven't done anything. Nothing has affected the, the battlefield. This is one of those cards that maybe you couldn't have if you had fewer units. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're uh, fighting a battle at Planet 2, with, which we can definitely tell is Aatrox Prime, and you have a Warlord, therefore you have initiative. Yes. So the Librarian just goes and slaps yeah. that Gene Stealer <laughs> upside the head. For damage. <laughs> and it is gone. Yeah. And now I've got a nice little bulwark there, so mm. you know, that'll be the first planet for the next round. When you have initiative. Mm. And that's, that's the thing we were talking about just now as well in terms of strategy for this game, is how you prepare for those sorts of things. Yeah, I tried to. I'm just trying to recall what that planet was. I'm busy going through a list of all the planets. <laughs> Which one's Taurus? Taurus. Yeah. Taurus is the one that if you have fewer units than your opponent, then you gain three resources or... I feel like cards, it was that one. Probably. Because that's why it couldn't be triggered. Because we had the same number of units, I think. Mm. And oh, that yeah, we were talking because your warlord and your synapse creature then count as one each. Yes, correct. Yeah. They, because they, they are a unit. Yeah. I think the, the synapse does, it means it's synapse, but it is a synapse unit mm. and it's a warlord unit. Mm. Okay. All right, so moving up to the planets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then there's a battle at the last planet where the gene stealer warlord is. And of course, that means I can move a unit of mine to a planet of my choosing. And that's even from your HQ. Yeah. Yeah. And there we go. You go and use more. You move your Morlock. Oh, so I triggered the battle ability there of of um, is that fair? Uh, Aatrox Prime. Oh, Aatrox, which means does one damage to each enemy unit in your target HQ or adjacent planet. And obviously, I targeted the HQ, so your Morlock took the damage there. Right. Um, and then that also killed the other Gene Stealer. Aha! Uh-huh, because that was back at. Yeah. I almost said camp. <laughs> Back at HQ. Yeah. All right, headquarters phase. Uh, everything resets. We get new planets. We draw some cards. We get some resources. Mm. So now that Morlock, what's his HP? Six or something. It's, it's pretty strong. It is six. Yeah. And he, he attacks for three, which I quite enjoy. Mm. And I think of the, the miniature unit for the actual Warhammer 40k <laughs> tabletop game. It's quite a massive Not thing. so miniature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your initiative. Yeah, there I go play um, Black Mane Sentinel um, as a reaction... Your, after your warlord commits to a planet, this unit can then commit to that same planet. So he actually follows the warlord, which it gives some, some versatility there. Mm, and and makes him very dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Well, it makes the threat of your warlord being at the planet where your opponent's warlord is going to be higher. Yeah. I mean, there's oh. another whole unit with 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Scary man. I love playing Armored <laughs> Shell. Yeah. My favoritist um, protection attachment Tyranid card. It just lets um, my unit, when it is assigned damage, prevent all but two of that damage. So when that librarian wants to swing for four, in fact, it's only going to do two. Mm. Well, if you add that onto a flyer as well, it just becomes... I've never thought of that. Ridiculous. Can you? I, 
I don't know why you wouldn't. Unless sometimes flyers say no war gear attachments. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then it's very possible that they can't. Ooh. And then this is a new thing for me, a new card um, in terms of my Tyranid sort of deck, is the Invasion Site support card. After an elite unit you control is destroyed, sacrifice the support to gain X number of resources. X is equal to that unit's printed cost. That's very cool. I know the Space Marines have a very similar one where you exhaust it, you don't sacrifice the support when an enemy or an army unit of yours dies and goes straight back to your hand if it's an elite. So yes. As opposed to getting the, the, the costs. You actually just get the card back. Yeah. At planet two, the Tyranids put down a Yungarl gene stealer. This is the one that uh, gets plus two attack while it's at a planet with a warlord and plus two HP while it's at a planet with a synapse unit. And one thing we picked up in this game is if you put both synapses, creature, and um, warlord. warlord in the same planet, he gets plus, plus two, plus two. Which had never occurred to me until <laughs> this game. But part of why I was using it, I suppose, was again to throw Ragnar off the scent. Mm. Feels like a thing a gene stealer might have done. Mm. I mean, you had the first planet, so you already had uh, a number of command icons. Oh, you mean um, just uh, victory icons? Your victory icons, mm-hmm. that, sorry, yeah. Uh, you had a red-green, um, so I guess if you got red-red for you know the next mm. two, you would have won. And maybe that's something I, I should have thought of, is, is committing to the first planet to really give your bulwark some, some run for its money. Right. So but, obviously, I no. commit my warlord to the first planet and like, win it. Yeah. Um, I'm still going for sort of more economy. The gene stealer, the the subject Omega himself is just lurking in the shadows <laughs> on a distant planet. Yeah. It's command, um, winning, winning, winning. I think you, so you didn't use his ability all that much because you didn't have any infected planets. You, we, yeah, we, yeah. I think you infect them later on. Yes, I was trying to infest and I just wasn't getting the cards that I needed that's to. That's the word, not infect. <laughs> it's uh, same, but different. Go. So I attacked with my librarian for four damage. Uh, limiting it to two, mm-hmm. obviously, and you used a shield to shield one, so it did one damage. Yeah. Like, th- that's that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and then it has... No, it doesn't have armor bane. I think we discussed that as well. Yes. Is that only after you deep strike the unit mm-hmm. and well, until the end of that phase did it have armor bane. Oh, so, there's a bit of a jump there. That jump... We lost the footage on this night. We, as you may have noticed, we're shooting in full HD at 60 frames per second, and it was chowing the battery and the card. <laughs> and so now you know... The Space Wolves won that planet, <laughs> and we lost the Morlock. Um, I sacrificed the invasion site to get some resources because it was an elite mm-hmm. unit. But essentially, yeah, look at your unit still sitting pretty. Yeah, I, I ended up shielding for three um, to, to negate the, the Morlock's damage. Oh, wow. Um, Sad then, we missed that, didn't get that yeah, on camera. And then having to attack with each of the other units just to kill it. Mm. The Gene Stealer then on the last planet uh, gets to deploy a unit for free essentially in their HQ and I deploy the Shrieking Harpy and you deploy a Black Bane Sentinel yeah I didn't have anything expensive in my hand but you can see your both that your Lictor as well as I think there's also a Lictor so your Snaps creature and the Lictor were damaged because of the battle ability of the previous planet that I won the Atrox Prime damage. you triggered it again yeah. yes of course yeah, so I dealt damage oh you mean the Gene Stealer and the Lictor yeah it's a Yimgarl gene stealer. It's a gene stealer. Okay, that, that's the one. That guy. <laughs> Yimgarl. Excuse you. <laughs> All right, so uh, people are sitting flash with resources at this stage. <laughs> Both of um, us. Not too many cards. I will say the Space Marine HQ is looking far more robust. Which is not always the best thing because all these units come in exhausted. Indeed. So then this was a new support card for me as well that I wanted to play. It's called the Synaptic Link. After a synapse unit you control commits to a planet, draw a card. So because I had lots of resources and not so many cards, I was mm. like, I need to balance this out. Sure. Actually, that's a very good good uh, support. And you just wanted more resources, so you put a mine down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I see you moving up your cards for another support. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Digestion pool, got to have it. If I have an infested planet, then I get to exhaust the support to reduce the unit's cost by two. So more than the usual that is in regular factions, but it has to be infested. Mm. And then I just played a hello librarian. (laughs) Hello library. (laughs) Um, Which allows me to exhaust the support and target an enemy unit at a planet uh, without an enemy warlord which actually works quite nicely with Ragnar's ability because obviously I'm chasing your warlord and you're trying to evade him. Mm -hmm. But now if I'm confronted with an enemy unit that has a high attack, I get to reduce it by two if I exhaust this. Indeed. So 
Three supports down for the Space Marines. Four, how many? Three down for the Tyranids. Oh, and so another Gene Stealer goes down. Again, no infested planet for it to come in ambush, so it has to go down as per usual because I need to just try and get some command, try and get some, uh, I don't know, some attack. And you couldn't use this ability because there was no army unit on my side that you could reduce its HP by. Correct. And even if you deep struck that unit before it went down, yeah. still couldn't mm. do anything. So I paid one resource to deep strike a unit. Mm. Which I think the rules, the newer rules on deep strike mean that's in reserve. Yes. That is the rule, right? Yeah. Okay. So I think we also agreed that you, I couldn't exhaust the, the monastery there. To reduce the price. Correct. Because it's separate. It's not deploying. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I'm pointing at it now. We we're discussing it. And so this is the thing about reserve, right? Is that it's not being deployed. Yeah. So you can't use it. Alas. Which I guess is the payoff because deep strike, deep striking a unit that has the deep strike ability is always cheaper than its cost. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you're doing it now for the surprise value. But mm -hmm. if you wanted to, to make it known, I guess you would, you would still pay the same cost with the librarian or whatever that is thing is. The monastery. Monastery. Yeah. Butcher's monastery. Uh, yeah, actually, that makes a good point. You exhaust that, then you, you pay the same resources mm. as you would for deep striking. But then you don't get the surprise. Yeah, shock value. <laughs> Which is always so satisfying with deep striking units. Oh, well, there we go. So we're committing to planets. Where am I going? Planet two. With your entire retinue. And yeah. this time, you catch the gene stealer. Mm. And um, the, the lictor has gone to planet three to plan him. On reconnaissance, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was I was just going on the uh, um, basis that I could lose Planet One, mm -hmm. the current Planet One, mm. and then, still win the game. Yes, so I could just you know forfeit it, maybe put a unit there to to create some issues for you, mm -hmm. do some damage, and then get my whole army ready for the next Planet One because now it's current Planet Two, it will be Planet One in the next round, and then you'll have initiative exactly, and they'll be readied. Whereas now they're exhausted. 100%. So if, if I had a bit of a stronger army following uh, me, the gene stealer there, could have done some hurt. So that is Black Mains? What is it? Hunt. Hunt. This is the combination that very nearly wrecked me. Mm. It was amazing. So that, that allows me to commit my warlord to an adjacent planet. Mm -hmm. And I think what we were discussing was the order of things in the command phase. Yeah. So as you commit, your warlord gets the ability... To do two damage, yeah. which we say happens. Then you play the card because it's an action in the action window yeah. and you get to move him. And then he gets to use his ability again. Mm. Was that not how we no, use no, it? So uh -huh. Yeah, I can only use it if he's committed to a planet with the Warlord. Oh, so correct. you can only use correct. it once, which is fine. But then as the reaction for both those Black Man Sentinels, they commit to the planet with the Warlord. Mm. So it's almost a, a, a second commitment um, per se. Got you, got you. Yeah. And now, so much for, hey, I can let Planet One go just with this one deep strike unit. Exactly. So now, bam, I've split my units entirely and I will win both of them. And now I've got my bulwark sitting on Planet um, Two. Exactly. So they've, they've done well. They've won a planet for you and now they're back to do it again. Mm. It's very clever. Maybe that's a really good strategy, actually. It's just put together a really strong combo of two or three units and just let them win planets go away, win yeah. the next planet go away. Well, the next like second planet. But you, you did something similar when you played the Eldar with the mobile um, Warlord. Oh, yeah? You constantly commit to a planet, so all the HQ units go there, and then you'd move to an adjacent planet. Hmm. So there we go. My deep strike units now um, undeep strikes or deep strikes. It, it becomes undeep struck. <laughs> no. Yes, it is deep struck. Deep, deep, deep strike. It's uh, essentially the Deathwing Terminators, which are quite strong. They've got four or five. I just exhausted them to attack your Morlock, no? No, my Ingarl gene stealer. And you have initiative because you're the one at the warlord of the planet. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the Deathwing Terminators have a reaction ability after you deep strike this unit it cannot be the target of an enemy card effect until the end of the com first combat round so you use a shield to stop my invasive gene stealer from killing your hail or active or readied black yes. main sentinel yeah. Yeah. and then you swing for two and, and again, then your warlord kills him Yeah, and a very easy planet win yeah and that's fair, in yeah? I think so. It is fair, yes. And it lets you route a non world unit, which has got to be the Shrieking Hobby, yeah. which then gives me far less to do <laughs> <laughs> on that planet. Yeah. So everybody wins. We go back to HQ. We celebrate. Mm-hmm. 
and then a battle is fought at planet number two, which I think is Barless. Uh, yeah, it is Barless. So everything there is exhausted from your side, but in one round or one turn, they're going to be awake, they're going to be ready, and they're going to bring the hurt. Well, that's the thing, and I, I think you wanted to attack the librarian, but you couldn't. Ah, uh, yes, because I get one swing, yeah? Yeah. Because if you had killed the librarian, I mean, that that's four damage gone. Mm-hmm. So you, you would have survived the next... Uh, well, I mean, yeah, no, I couldn't attack you now, so everyone ready, then you could retreat. Mm-hmm. So in, in, in doing so, you can quickly kill the librarian and sneak away. Potentially, but I can't. So yeah. interesting that I went for the Rune Priest and not the Blood Angels exactly. Veterans. And this is what we were talking about, is I think I misunderstood his ability. Yeah. That it's only when he's ready does he negate the one damage. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, it's the Rune Priest, which now... Once everyone readies, means, ooh, what are you doing there? Oh, I exhausted that um, hello librarium <laughs> to reduce your warlord's attack value by two. Which so then negates. To zero. Yeah. And that's why you didn't do any damage. And now the interesting thing is the only option for me really is to, to flee. Otherwise, I will get bloodied. Yeah. And by doing that, you take a damage. Because yeah. of your room priest. Take a damage? Does that make sense? Take a damage! <laughs> Take one damage. And then I get to use the planet's ability, which is discard one card at random from your opponent's hand. I see we haven't given the gene stealer damage, though. Do we forget? I'll probably get to it now. Huh. So you managed to choose and discard my defense battery, which is a neutral card I haven't used in a long time, and I was very excited to have in the deck. We just didn't see it's it. quite strong, isn't it? Because if you attach it to a planet... Every unit I commit to that planet takes one damage. Correct. Just, just like that. Yeah. As soon as they commit, yeah, it, it almost stops someone from committing to that planet. Indeed. However, I don't think it's every unit. I think it gets exhausted. So oh, it only does it once. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So there's a way to get around that, I suppose, sure. is you know, make sure the first thing you commit has a way of negating that damage or... It's got strong health. Or it's strong health. So now I see we've definitely forgotten to give one damage to the gene stealer. I don't know if it's going to affect later play, probably. Um, but we're still both very flush for cash. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and again, the Space Marines HQ is looking solid. Hmm. Many butters up in there. So now we're already on to Planet 5. So a fairly long game, yeah. yeah. So this is actually one of the longer commentaries we've ever hmm. done. Definitely. Everything's readied. Initiative is on your side, good sir. Yes, that's how he planned it, to have the, the units from the HQ ready. Indeed. But it looks like you passed, because now I'm playing. I honestly didn't have anything to play in my hand. Uh-huh. I think I had a whole lot of event cards or reactions, which I wanted to ha- hold and save as shields, mm. but I didn't have any units. So now that's something that should already ring bells to an opponent. If, if they pass and they have so many resources, it means sneaky stuff is on the horizon. Yeah, exactly. So I, I uh, put a unit in reserve, and then we play a Spore Chimney. I can't remember what it does. <laughs> <laughs> is it a support? It is a support. I'm going to look for it now in my, my deck of cards. And I think I just keep going here, or is that it? Do I just keep playing? Well, yeah, you, you have literally free, free reign to keep playing whatever you want. This is the first card, the Spore Chimney, that lets me, during the or after the headquarters phase, infest a target planet. So I can start infesting and start using my Gene Stealer abilities properly. Mm-hmm. Until such time, I just put down a Gene Stealer Prowler. I quite enjoy this card. It's got no special ability. It's just a one cost, two attack, two health. The problem here is in my rush to be sneaky and trying to play, yeah. I didn't think through this properly because there's no need to put him on the last planet. I mean, right. yes, maybe it gives me one extra resource, but it's not going to help. I need him to be part of the battle. Yeah. The game will end at the current planet too. Yeah. You didn't need the resources. Yeah. Indeed. So there we go. We both commit to, well, your synapsis creatures goes to, to two mm. and your warlord to one. Well, planet three. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> one depending on your direction which is incorrect because I was just looking at that now going how stupid would that move be it's actually yeah, planet one yeah. but yeah definitely that gene stealer prowler probably should have gone to planet one if I'm looking at this again I should have mm. just put in there to try have a little bit of a fight mm, agreed give you something else to swing at mm. but cool so your warlord doesn't get his ability there's no other warlord at the planet mm-hmm. um, I don't do anything special command is won by me planet one you by planet two and you by planet three I suppose, yeah, I'm trying to think if you had played that um, Prowler anywhere else, if it would have mattered. Would it have changed anything? Yeah. I don't know if I, 
remember to do this now, but the synaptic link lets me draw a card. Yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was just looking at it now. You might have forgotten to do that the first time we committed to planets. Very possibly. So a reminder to anyone watching Conquestador, it's casual. It's very <laughs> casual, actual play. It's friends playing this game. Um, so yeah, we, we do things wrong often. And you'll see we're fairly um, accommodating for each other. So if we forget to do something, we'll go back and say, I would have done this. Indeed. It's, it's not too hard, fast rules. Yeah, I don't think either of us has played in any sort of tournament. Mm. Also, all those tournaments stopped at the end of 2016. <laughs> <They have laughs> and uh, I think we only picked up this game in 2017. What, Something like that. Was it, yeah, it was really late. Um, yeah, it was more of a whim, like, ooh, we see it at our local store, let's get it, and yeah, I started playing it. We enjoy some good Warhammer. You've been playing proper Warhammer 40k for ages. Yeah, I don't know when I started. It was years ago. It was still <laughs> second edition. Wow. Oh, no, I lied. No, fifth. Fourth. Fourth edition. Fourth. We started with fourth edition, and it's now on eighth edition. Yeah. It's a good innings. Hmm. Myself, I only started on 7th. <laughs> All right, what have you got there? I think that is a Dark Cunning. I like that card very much. Um, let me double check that that is, in fact, the right card. I'm just going to sift through my, my deck here. It is, in fact, Dark Cunning, which is it lets you ready a target non warlord unit you control, and if that unit is an infested dependent, I gain a resource. So that doesn't happen. Ooh, that works nicely if you're committing a whole lot of units from your HQ. Mm-hmm. So there we go. You've done some damage to my Rune Priest. And you played Repent. Yes, so what that does is each of us exhausts a unit with the highest printer's costs from both our from the full set of units that you have ready or mm -hmm. in play. And those both those units then exhaust and they deal damage to each other based on their attack value. Okay. Do they exhaust though? Because I see they've both done it, but they didn't exhaust. They should have exhausted. Aha. Uh -huh. Again, one of the many wonderful things that happen in our games. <laughs> Okay, so th that makes sense then if they were to exhaust. Yeah, yeah, because now they, essentially they're attacking each other. The, the car is forcing two of the strongest units to attack each other. I see. So you did two damage to me, I did three damage to you against the, the, the two strongest units. Um, and I was hoping to kill it, and I did with the librarian. Yes. Because so they should have been exhausted. Okay, good to, to know. Good to know. Well, I mean, I don't know how much it would have changed, really. More just an aesthetic thing. Mm -hmm. So the Tyranids are definitely taking a beating. The Space Wolves are, are doing well uh, in this Traxxas sector to eliminate the threat. So you get to use the ability again to discard a card. Mm -hmm. And then I win it. And then not quite one yet in terms of having all the strategic icons. But Planum will be the winning planet then. Yes, exactly. So this is where the battle happened. It, do it always ends up that way. yeah. And I find... If for anyone watching, maybe you always see that we play through to things and we'll, we'll maybe try to be better to foresee when the end of the game actually is so we don't waste anyone's time. Um, but probably it might have been called at this point. And, uh, well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you had lots of sneaky tricks up your sleeve, so maybe mm. you were hanging on to a whole lot of cards and you could play them all now. So it could have gone either way. The way you know we, we, we should play it, and I would imagine it is, is best for the viewers, is... When an individual actually feels like they can't, they're not going to win. We we just you know agree, gentlemen's agreements. You know you forfeit. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So over there, um, I think you exhausted your support to stop me from actually doing any damage. Yeah. So it, it exhausted the support to targets an enemy unit that doesn't have an enemy warlord, and that unit then has minus two damage. And then you swing with your warlord to do damage to yep. the, the Lictor yep. and um, everyone resets and I'm like, get out of dodge. Yeah, now we move everything down. Then my warlord goes back to HQ. See, now, again, I've, I've almost got two groups of units mm. moving with each other back and forth. It's such a wonderful strategy. So maybe that's, that's such a, a simple and clear way to play is just work out when you have initiative mm. and make sure your units are there in those odd combinations. You just had the good fortune of doing it at every single planet yeah. anyway. <laughs> exactly. Which is fantastic. And you use your last resource from your Promethean mine. Indeed, during the headquarters phase, which I hope I don't forget here, but now that I have the spore chimney during the headquarters phase, I can now infest a planet. Mm, mm. The initiative token to, got handed over. There we go. You infested the planet. It is done. So 
at the last battle, at the last planet, <laughs> we get infestation. <laughs> this is probably one of my, um, my second favorite <laughs> Terranid cards is Parasitic Infection, which I get to attach to an enemy army unit. You'll see I put it on the Black Main Sentinel. Mm, mm. After the combat phase begins, put one Termagon token into play at this planet and deal the attached unit one damage. Now, I don't see that I've put a Tyranid in play there. This is why we don't play games at night. Yeah, we not think. We, we not think. We not think. We don't think. <laughs> Clearly, it's problematic. So we, we for, I forgot, Tristan forgot to put a, a Termagant in play, but at least it's attached to your unit. Mm. And then um, I went ahead and attached uh, an, well, an attachment to the Terminators, Deathwing Terminators. It's a friend region wolf, which allows that unit at the beginning of a battle to attack... Um, essentially before ranged units. Such a good such a good thing. Also, I just realized the parasitic infection is at the start of the combat phase, so the Termagant won't be in play just yet, hopefully later. Uh, scything Hermagaunts come into play after you deploy this unit, infest this planet. Again, a rather silly thing to do. Ah, there we go, Seminatus. <laughs> <laughs> so we I think at this it. point I had so much money and I had the card in my hand and I played it just to kill um, that Prowler you had on the last planet. But immediately after playing it, I'm like, oh, I should have kept it as a shield. Mm. Because it, it, it's it's helpful. I mean, it's got one shield, but it, you know, it's a shield. Indeed, a shield is a shield. Yeah, you can you can never have too many. <laughs> <laughs> so I put a gene stealer prowler down, and you're just like, hey, void pirate. Yeah, <laughs> but not on the, not on the last planet to like give you extra resources. I suppose exactly. why do you want more resources? Um, but you put him down at the first planet. Yeah. So coming back to original comment, don't play at night. <laughs> <laughs> um, while playing at night, I deploy the Ravenous Haru Specs, one of my stronger units that I had put in this Tyranid deck. It has a reaction. After this unit destroys an enemy army unit by an attack, gain X resources. X is equal to the printed cost of the destroyed unit. Uh, I don't suppose I necessarily needed that. I just needed a unit that would hit for three and have an HP of five. Mm. Yeah, you, you had some tanky units. And I still didn't know what that um, deep, deep strike, deep struck unit is. That unit in reserve right now. Yeah. Exactly. It has yet to be deep striked. <laughs> yeah, so this, this is the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, your warlord just doesn't commit to the same planet. Yeah, which I was like, mm, I mean, what, what, are the, what is the harm? It would have given you one other thing to hit at. He would have been bloodied, sure. He wouldn't have done anything. But actually, it, now that I look at it, that was silly. I should have, should have just gone in, in yeah, and I mean, seen what would have happened. All in. So look, it did reduce my warlord from being able to do two damage to any army unit. But because your, your warlord is not there, I can use my support to reduce the attack value of something by two. And you wouldn't have been able to do that if the warlord was there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, this game can get uh, very technical. So you need to know your opponent's cards as well as... And right now, <laughs> we realize that I misread the command dial. So, scratch that. <laughs> All is well. So you get to do two damage. But now this is the thing. I reread it, and it's not there's not two damage to that warlord. It's two damage to a unit, a, a enemy enemy units. Yeah. Correct. So then you choose the how do you specs to do two damage to, and now I get to decide whether I use a shield now or later. And that is my favorite attachment. I, I said the parasitic was the second. Yeah. The, <laughs> the heavy venom cannon. Shame it goes away. So you just use it as a shield. Yeah. Just to keep him alive because I wanted to swing for three, man. Oh yeah. So now we're counting up icons. Come on, icons. Um, indeed. <laughs> and the Void Pirate. Yeah. So did he end up giving me that resource and card? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so still getting um, the economic choke mm. as well as I mean, soldiering. At this point, both of us had so much money, so many resources. We're actually running out of resource tokens to play. We were. We started using dice. Yeah. I remember now. The Lictavine Lurker was the creature that you needed to know about. Its reaction is that after you deep strike this unit, discard one card at random from your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. I suppose I was just trying to lessen the amount of shields you might yeah, have. Yeah. Let's see if I uh, had any luck. Eh. So, so. What is that? Yeah, it's one shield card. Hmm. Looks like Vengeance. Yeah, I think it was Vengeance, mm -hmm. which is actually a really nice card. Hopefully, we'll see it in future videos. If we play Ragnar again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We've got some dum, dum, lovely dum. things uh, lined up story-wise. Yeah. So at the start of the combat phase, the parasitic infection kicks off. It yep. does one damage. Therefore, the Black Bane Sentinel is dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was actually very good. 
So you have initiative, however. I see that. So this could have actually gone your way quite quickly. Ah, uh, there we go. So uh, yeah, and now it doesn't go my way. <laughs> Brother Barbers. Barbers. Um, he has the ambush ability. That's why I was able to play him from my hand during the combat action phase. Um, and as a reaction, after this unit enters play, deal two damage to a target army unit at this planet. As long as so this ability cannot attack a space marine, imperial guard, or a chaos unit. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's a death watch soldier. Very cool. But yeah, and then my Deathwing Terminator is going to swing first because they have the Fen Reason Wolf attachment. Of course. For four damage. And then I kill your horse specs. Harry you specs. Harry specs. So he's not so ravenous after all. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, hey guys, I'm not keen for lunch today. I'm out. Got shot in the face. <laughs> And I think we just wanted to, well, at least I wanted to see how this played out. Yeah. I could pretty much tell, I think, earlier that yeah. there was no way the Tyrannians were going to win, but I wanted to see what could happen. And you'll notice I have a very particular strategy to just enjoy the end of this game. Mm. So if I hadn't picked up that uh, veteran and, for example, I didn't have the, the attachment for the Fenris and Wills, you probably could have won it. I mean, mm. you had a lot of guys, high, high damage outputs, and you had initiative. So that just suggests very good strategy and very good reaction play from the Space Marines and the Space Wolves in sure. terms of what you draw exactly. and going, all right, well, I have this. This is how I stop him from mm. trampling. And there we go. So now you're attacking units that are readied, so mm -hmm. they cannot do any sort of initial damage now. Um, so I still have... The veteran. Yeah, the veteran. Oh, and my Void Pirate, who does zero damage. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. So I do two damage. At this point, I think we've used up a lot of our cards for shields. Well, you had no cards left in your yeah. hand. You just used one there to keep the Rune Priest alive. Yeah. And the Lick Divine Looker swings for the last shot to make sure the Rune Priest goes down. Yeah. I mean, people are probably thinking that's a stupid idea. Keep him alive for one more round and then he dies. But I've actually wasted then two people's attack mm. on him. Now, Vengeance would have been awesome here mm. because you had killed one of my units, then I could have readied another unit. Indeed. And that attacked with it. But it would have ended it like immediately. Yeah. So. It seems no. I'm thinking. Oh, uh, I was deciding. Who to attack. Yeah. yeah. So, Subject Omega in his last final attack goes, I will go for the Warlord. Yeah. Everybody readies, and there's a chance to retreat. I don't think that's going to happen because that will just signal the end of the game. Um, we get actions, there's no actions, and there's no ranged, so you get your Fenrisian attack. Mm -hmm. That's four damage. Now I'm debating who to attack. There we go. It's Makes another, sense. That's another Kill him huge amount out. of damage. Uh, and because you didn't have any cards in your hand, I knew there were no shields. Yeah, so it was easy. And now you'll see I just start attacking Going the Warlord. For the Warlord. Like, <laughs> the, the smallest psychological victory would be to bloody him. <laughs> okay, I must attack with the Librarian now. It's four damage. Come on. What are we pointing at? I think we're debating about me using my Warlord to attack, but he only has two damage. Um, but yeah, then I attack the Librarian. Bloodied uh, subject Omega, and, and then I just swing in. Oh no, no! no. I remember we discussed this afterwards because you see the Termagant is still not there. Mm. He might have been able to have an extra swing in. Oh uh, yeah, actually you're right. I think we discussed it just at the end of the game. That would have been two rounds of him attacking there. Mm. Yeah, good game. And then we called the game. So thank you, Warren. Uh, a nice win from the Space Wolves. And thank you, Justin. Yeah, very interesting game dynamics there from the Gene Stealers. Most definitely. Thank you so very much for listening. It is a win for Ragnar for this Tooth and Claw narrative game. Yes, indeed. Thank, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If you like what we're doing, go check out all our other stuff. If you want to get a hold of us, leave comments in the sections below. Yeah. And all we'll right. see you in the next episode. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.